Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure if you like this video that you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And definitely make sure you ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is in the description or at the end of the video. So check it out. Uh, today, this is kind of a continuation of a conversation I've been having with one of my viewers. So thank you. <laughs> also named John, by the way. Um, and he asked about uh, anti-reflective coating on crystals, on watches. So um, I thought I would kind of look into that. It's a rather interesting topic, and it's actually, <laughs> it's there's a lot of different opinions about this. So I'm going to kind of lay out the general pluses and minuses of, of AR coatings, and also talk about what they are, why they're necessary, um, and then, you know, sort of give my thought about it overall, but it's just my thoughts. Many companies, including Rolex, which is a very expensive watchmaker, does not use any anti-reflective coatings. So I think that causes people to go like, wait a second, Rolex doesn't use it, but Omega, this guy actually has dual layer anti-reflective coating. So it's got stuff on the top end and also inside the crystal. So we'll talk about why in just a second. So what is AR coating? AR or anti-reflective coating just is a coating that's deposited on the top, generally speaking, of a uh, sapphire crystal, and, and I'll talk about why in a second. And if you you shine it, it what it does is it gets rid of a lot of the reflectivity of it so that you can read the dial under many different conditions. It also has a side effect most of the time of turning the reflections kind of a blue color. And so if I kind of rotate this around some, you might see that the reflection of this is a little bit on the blue side, potentially. So, um, okay, so why AR coating and why specifically for Sapphire? Number one, AR coating just means it's anti-reflective. If you've ever looked into, um, goodness, like even an old television set or something, like the old CRT TVs, right? They didn't have anti-reflective coating. And if you had a bright window behind you, I'm, again, I'm showing off my age here. Uh, but anyway, if you had a bright window behind you, you couldn't see what was on the TV because the reflection of the window was very, very bright and very, very crisp. And so if you don't have uh, anti-reflective coating on something that's highly reflective, what you can get is a kind of perfect image of the thing that's being reflected. Most often that would be the sun or a light bulb or something like that. And it would make it very difficult to see what's behind that glass. Why specifically is AR coating specifically used on Sapphire? Well, that comes down to the refractive index on Sapphire. Sapphire is super, super hard. It's got a Mohs index of nine, which is the second highest level behind diamond, um, which has a Mohs index value of 10. So anyway, it's very, very, very hard to scratch. But the kind of accompanying aspect of that is that it has a refractive index of 1.8. So that's much, much higher than glass or mineral glass which has a refractive index of like 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. And what that means is, like if you ever looked at a diamond, right? You know, look at an engagement ring, a big rock, that has a very high refractive index and you see all kinds of light bouncing around and popping out of it, which makes the diamond look really beautiful and interesting. Uh, but it makes it, if you tried to see something behind the diamond, you can't do that because it's refracting light all over the place. So because Sapphire has a very high refractive index, because it's hard, um, it reflects everything really, really well. So without a uh, AR coating, it can be very hard to actually see the dial. And so as opposed to something like um, like a Seiko SKX007 or something that has a mineral glass crystal and also a very flat crystal, you're only really going to get reflection if the light source is exactly, you know, like 90 degrees. So it goes in, goes boink like that. And so you can turn your wrist just a tiny, tiny bit and you can see just fine. Um, something like this Seamaster, if you can see on the side, it's slightly domed. And that doming means that it will reflect everything at a wide range of angles. So having a domed sapphire crystal almost necessitates having some sort of AR coating. I mean, it doesn't necessitate it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be really hard to read at a lot of angles. So you might find yourself kind of going like this to be able to see what time it was because you just can't see the, um, the hands behind the dial or behind the crystal. So, uh, so there's a good reason for that. The downside of AR, number one, it's kind of complicated and expensive. I gather that what they do is some sort of a deposit system and they put the they like kind of like layer this stuff on top of the 
uh, sapphire either on either side, inside or outside. So they'll they'll take it and they'll layer it on top. And if they do it on the other side, they'll flip it over and they'll layer it on the other side. Um, super expensive to do on a one watch per one watch basis. They the reason why they can make it a reasonable cost. Uh, is because of economies of scale. So if you're doing a thousand of these crystals at a time, adding the AR, you know, at once is not nearly as expensive as doing it every single one. So anyway, so it would if you try to get an AR coating on a watch after the fact, it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to be difficult to do. In fact, I think oftentimes they say it's just cheaper to buy the crystal itself than it is to get the AR coating put on the crystal. Okay, so positives, right? You can actually read this, no problem, at many, many different angles, and it doesn't reflect light so badly. So what's the negative? Well, the negative is this is a sapphire crystal, so that's a Mohs scale 9, so it's super hard, which means you can whack it into walls and you can whack it into doors and all sorts of other things that don't do that. <laughs> but you know, if you randomly are walking by something and scrape your arm on it, there's a really good chance that the sapphire is going to be unscathed. Um, but the AR coating is just a coating on the outside of this. So honestly, even if you took a hard polishing cloth and like like that, you were going to end up scratching the AR coating. And if you scratch the AR coating, A, it could come off, or B, it could look like streaks of nasty stuff on there or something, or dirt that you can't clean. And that's a very sad thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a super, super big downside to that. Um, also, I don't know. I have seen some people claim that AR coatings actually age and that they can age out and either become unclear or fall off. And so they become less, less efficacious over time. So decades, right? If you own this watch for 20 or 30 years, the AR coating might become useless. Um, there's a couple things to that matter. I, I I don't quite buy that whole argument for a couple of reasons. But first of all, let's talk about the in-between. So Omega does both sides, outside and inside. They do two layers of AR coating. Rolex does zero layers of AR coating. They put no AR coating on the outside or the inside. They consider it an advantage that it's a very shiny watch, right? So it goes wingy and it glints a lot and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there is an in-between. A lot of companies put AR coatings just on the inside of the crystal. So, you know, if you're looking on the outside here, that's the part I can touch. On the inside of the crystal, obviously there's room for the watch mechanism and all the hands and all of that kind of stuff to live. So there's a small gap between the crystal and the actual hands. And so there's an underside to the crystal. And you can put the AR coating on the underside of the crystal and that is protected, right? If you whack it against something, it's not going to fall off because it's inside the crystal, so that's not going to get damaged. So there are several watch companies. I, I don't know about any high-end ones. I could just be missing them. I mean, actually, I think AP Audemars Piguet might actually do it on the inside. Um, but there's a lot of mid-range brands that sell sapphire crystal with AR coating specifically on the inside and not the outside. So I think that's a... That's actually a pretty reasonable compromise, and you know, when you're paying ten thousand dollars plus for a watch like a Rolex, it seems kind of silly that they don't put some sort of AR coating on the inside. Now, again, apparently they have an aesthetic value; they think it looks better if it's shiny and kind of reflective. But I don't know. I'd take reading the dial. <laughs> I mean, so again, I can understand why not to put it on the outside of the crystal because it could get damaged, but not putting it on the inside seems silly. Uh, the argument, of course, about that I've heard about not putting it on the inside is that it can wear out over time. Well, quite honestly, if you own this watch for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years, there's a reasonable chance that in the servicing process or, you know, at some point you're going to damage the crystal anyway. And as it's being serviced, you could request a new crystal be put onto the watch. So... You know, if you're going to own something for that long, it's going to end up getting serviced every five to ten years anyway. And so at some point, you could replace the crystal for a reasonably low cost. It wouldn't be that expensive to do that. So that that's the reason why I can't quite see not putting a, an anti-reflective coating on the inside of a watch at the very least. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to see. Like, this is still relatively new. This is only about a six-month-old watch. I've had no problems with it. I tend to be pretty careful with my watches. But I could see the potential for this watch getting scratched or something. And it would be a real eyesore every time I looked down if I saw, like, the scratch on the air coating. That would be... <laughs> I do have another flat crystal, uh, a Zelos watch that has a flat um, sapphire crystal. And that 
doesn't have, or excuse me, that one also has an AR coating, but it's flat and I've had it for longer. I have seen no problems with that whatsoever. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess, I guess if you want my ultimate opinion, it would be if you have Sapphire Crystal as opposed to anything else, otherwise it's not really worthwhile doing it and it's domed, then you should probably have at least one layer of AR coating, if not two. If it's sapphire and it's flat, because it's flat, again, it's only going to reflect, like assuming you're outside and the sun's there, it's only going to reflect the light at a very specific angle, and so you can just ch change the angle of your arm a little bit. So if it's a completely flat sapphire crystal, maybe not as important to have that um, as, as other things. Interestingly enough, a lot of people swear by the fact that if you have a tool watch, like a dive watch, or... Um, uh, a pilot's watch or something where it's super, super critical that you be able to read the dial under any conditions. They say that that is actually a very big reason to have an AR coating. And a, here's a weird one. I had not heard about this till I kind of looked into it a little bit today. And that is that the ultimate, ultimate reason for having an AR coating is because if you're a military person using this watch, that you don't want to like face it into the sun or the moon by accident and have it go bling and have it, you know, glint off something, right, and give away your position to the enemy. So that's, uh, some people swear that that's the reason why AR coatings exist. Now, honestly, um, I could see that being the origin of AR coatings, but these are all consumer-grade watches, so, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody's taken these out into the, into the field in a military-type situation, but I certainly can buy that AR coatings were originally created for the military uh, for a lot of the the you know, not even for watches necessary, maybe for cameras or something, right? You're in the field and you're like a sniper and you're like looking through your scope and you don't want somebody to see the reflection of the light off that scope. So you would put an AR coating on the, on the uh, far end of it to make sure that people couldn't get a reflection off it. So that does make sense. Uh, but anyway, for watches, I think if you have domed sapphire, you should definitely have AR people who have Rolexes don't agree with that. So there you go. <laughs> or at least Rolex itself doesn't agree with that, no matter what you think about it. Um, but if you have flat sapphire or if you have hesalite or mineral crystal or something like that, or hard lex that Seiko makes, it's not that necessary because the index of refraction is low enough that you don't get that, uh, you know, you don't get the reflections anyway to that extent. All right, hopefully you found this interesting and informative. If you did, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And definitely ask me more questions, watch related or other related, either in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye bye.